So, uh, we're delighted to have you all here. And without further ado, I'm going to introduce our first writer. Sophie Laguna's first adult novel uh, was uh, long-listed for the Miles Franklin Award, which is the kind of shortlisted, even. No, long-listed, because she wasn't a man. She wasn't on the shortlist, I don't think. The Prime Minister's, the Prime Minister's Literary Prize, it was shortlisted for getting this introduction rung at a number of levels, but it's an extraordinary novel. It's called One Foot Wrong, and you're going to hear from it now from someone who knows it uh, even better than I do. Please make very welcome Sophie Laguna. One Foot Wrong tells the story of Hester Wakefield, and Hester refers to her father as Boot and her mother as Sack. And Hester's friends uh, in the house are the household objects. I was stirring the stew when someone spoke to me. Sack was in the living room tapping her foot to Alleluia coming from the radio box. Boot was outside chopping wood. It was the wooden spoon in my hand who had spoken to me. It was only a whisper and hard to hear. I had to bend close to the stew to hear spoon better. I smelled warm meat and onion. Ask Boot for pencils and paper, Spoon whispered. Alleluia, sang the radio box. Praise him. Chop, went axe into the block. I didn't ask Boot or Sack for anything. I knew better. You should know better, Hester. You're a big girl now. I should know better, I whispered back to Spoon. Praise him, praise him, sang the radio box. Chop, chop, went axe into the block. Spoon lifted meat and potato from the pot as she stirred. Ask Boot. But I'm a big girl now, I whispered back. Ask him, but ask him. After we'd eaten the stew, Sack said that her back was giving her trouble and she was going to bed. Boot sat at the table making a matchstick boat in a bottle. Spoon lay clean and drying across the rack. I could see her from where I was sitting on the floor with Cat. Ask now, said Spoon. Now? Yes, now. But now. Could I have a pencil and paper? I asked Boot. He looked up from his boat building. A matchstick shook between his fingers. What? He said. Could I have a pencil and paper? He waited. Why don't you call me Daddy or Papa? What's wrong with you? Every daughter calls their father Daddy or Papa. Why not mine? I looked at Boot, at his trousers and his white fingers holding the matchstick. There were some small dark hairs on the knuckles. I looked at his neck coming out of the top of his shirt. His neck had grey hairs faint red lines and some brown spots that looked soft like sponge. Why had they grown up out of his skin, those spots? What was inside them? Boots scratched at his shoulder. Father, could I have a pencil and paper? The circles of Boots' eyes filled with water that came from a deep well beneath his feet. He put down the matchstick, matchstick quick, quick whispered thank you, and came to me across the floor. He held my face in his hands. They smelled of stew and boat glue, and he kissed the top of my head. Then he went into the locked study. He came back with a pencil and some paper. The paper had blue lines running across. I had to hold back my hungry hands from grabbing. What are you going to do with them, Hester? He asked. Are you going to write me a letter? His mouth curled up at the sides as he passed me the pencil and the paper. I lay across the floor and started to draw. I couldn't wait. Boot watched for a minute. Then he went back to the boat. Don't make a mess, he said. The pencil had me sailing on a spoon boat the way Noah did in the storm. I wore a skirt and a flower hat and I stood at the front of the spoon boat. It was me who knew the way. We sailed through the hole in the bottle. I hope you've drawn a picture of me, said Boot, his mouth curling up again. Show me. He bent down to where I lay on the floor and he looked at my picture. What is all of this? He shook his head. I can let you have the pencils and paper for drawing as long as we clean up after ourselves. 
Then Boot took my spoon boat and he turned it into a small ball. He put it in the kitchen bin with the bones and the dust. You can have more later. It will be our secret. He put his finger to his mouth. Shh. There are one person secrets and there are two person secrets. This was a two person mm. secret. Boot gave me pencils and paper for drawing when Sack's back gave her trouble and she had to take an early lie down. The pencil spoke softly to me while I drew. She said, I am your friend for eternity. I said, what is eternity? Pencil answered, where there are no walls or floors, where it is light and you can hear the music of the wind. I drew eternity. It had stones and water and the wind blew. There was a house with pencil walls and there were spaces between every pencil so you could always visit the forbidden outside. What do you do in eternity? I asked pencil as I drew. You become the eye of the world. You see it all. It goes into you and when it goes into you it doesn't hurt. It shivers. You have wings. Can you dance there? Yes, of course. I drew wings dancing with wings, lifting me up and spinning me into the eye of the world. What do you do in eternity, I asked. Pencil said, oh, what do you eat in eternity, I asked. Pencil said, apples. I filled the sky with apples. Whenever I drew, Boot was there. He sat at the table and put boats in bottles. After a while, he looked at my drawings, shook his head, curled his mouth up at the sides and said, what a funny mess. Then he took my picture, made it a tiny ball of paper and put it in the kitchen bin. I counted the little hand going round the face of the clock and I waited for the next time Sack had her back trouble and I could draw again. It was raining and Sack said it was too wet for washing. Cat and me couldn't look at the outside through the window from the couch arm. Tomorrow we'll have to do, said Sack and sneezed. I climbed up onto the couch arm anyway and looked at the brown curtains. Sack said, get down off there. Boot came in. Sack blew her nose into a handkerchief. I'd better check on mother. Last time there was a downpour like this, her chimney leaked. I can go, said Boot, touching her arm. No, said Sack, and pushed past him. My mother doesn't recognise you. But you aren't well, Catherine. I'm well enough. She took her coat from the hook and wrapped her scarf around her cold neck. She sneezed again, then walked out the front door. I have never been out the front door because I was a source of shame and the thief of my mother's strength. Now the hot house only had Boot in it and me. Who is my mother? I asked Boot. What? Who is my mother? Who is your mother? What do you mean? Who is she? You know who your mother is, Hester. Boot shook his head because I was an aberration. Then he went into his study and locked himself inside. The doorway of Boot's study opened into the neck of a bottle and if you ever stepped through, you stepped straight into the bottle and got stuck like the boats. Only Boot could come and go. Water fell down onto the house. The sky rumbled. Hester. Somebody called me. I went into the kitchen. Hester, turn me. It was Handel. Jesus beat the drum the way he did at the feasts. Hester, I am your true friend. Turn me. But I should know better. Turn me, he said again. But. Turn me, turn me, turn me. I turned him. The back door opened to the forbidden outside. It was dark and wet. Water poured from the home of the sun. Jesus beat the dream, dr drum faster. I walked down through the wet grass. The hungry sky rumbled again. Tree was there, still reaching, but for what? There was no sun. I ran to her to ask her. She was rough against my cheeks. Her kisses rough on my lips. She said, pretty. Beautiful. Tree, what do you reach for? I asked, my mouth pressed close. I put my ear to her for an answer. There was nothing. What are you reaching for, Tree? Still no answer. Tree, tell me what you reach for. Her voice was a cooing pigeon. I'm reaching as high as I can. For what? For all of the highest things. For eternity? Yes, for eternity. Eternity is the highest of all. Water fell down on my head. The world was a bath. I pulled off my clothes and my shoes and ran around the garden. A bright light turned on in the sky. Then there was a crashing sound and I shouted back as loud as I could. The grass was sharp under my feet. 
my feet prickled because they had insects running in circles around them, running and rubbing their wings together, calling and singing as I ran and laughed the devil's laugh. A dark shape moved down from the house towards me. It was Sack. Tree called, come here, climb me. I jumped up to her lowest branches and tried to pull myself higher. My legs hung down. My feet of insects made them too heavy to lift. Sack had me by the back. She smacked my legs. You'll be the death of me. My feet broke open and the black insects came charging out from my toes. They ran up my legs, along my back, across my tum and down onto Sack, who screamed. The insects covered us until there was no skin left. Rain fell. The sky lit up over our heads. I could see the flame fingers of the tree with the sky white and angry behind them. Tree shouted, you will be the death of her. And Sack pulled me back inside by my hair and arm, insects streaming from her body. After that, the back door was always locked. Handel stayed quiet when I passed. Sometimes I looked at him and there was a question in his wooden eye, but I couldn't hear it. Even with my ear pressed close, I couldn't. 